Hi all, I have an absolutely fascinating and instructive World Chess Championship game to show you today. This was played in 1929. It's a highly distinctive World Chess Championship game because it actually ended in one side being checkmated. So let's have a look at this game. So playing white was Efim Bogolubov and playing black was Alexander Alekhine. So let's have a look at this game. D4 from Efim for short and we have knight f6 from alexander alakine c4 and here the usual move is e6 quite often and the game would go into either usually a nimzu engine for example like this or a queen's engine if white plays knight f3 and usually you know the player with the black pieces needs to know how to handle both but actually there's an intriguing uh, candidate here for a new accelerated system one of the most official well <laughs> definitely official accelerate systems is in the Sicilian dragon you can play an accelerated dragon and that gives the perk sometimes of being able to play d5 one move when you play the accelerated uh, dragon or the accelerated king's engine that's another example d5 and one move so acceleration uh, can occur when you don't commit well in those in those examples the center pawn here this has sometimes been termed uh, probably non-officially as the accelerated queen's engine defense b6 so actually there is no decision to even commit this pawn to e6 in preparation for a potential pin if white plays knight c3 instead black is ready to fight against that e4 square and so it creates whole new interesting strategies just based on this move order what are the pros and cons of this move order and can it actually lead the black player into their own territory can you get an informational advantage by just this tricky very tricky move order so there's a course to check out at chessball uh, for this accelerated queen's engine uh, so king's crusher tv slash accelerated qid queen's engine defense so you might want to check that out so here in this game featured we have knight c3 so if he plays knight c3 and we have bishop b7 and in fact perhaps white is trying to uh, blunt this bishop now and plays f3 it does seem quite a logical idea one other perk though sometimes you know this pawn might actually go to e5 in one go sometimes if there is support for that not here clearly it will be a terribly unsound gambit uh, black actually plays very sensibly white could construct a very nice center with e4 if left unchecked so to speak and so we have d5 this is looking a little bit peculiar as if it's a greenfield strategy in some way after c takes knight takes it's as if it's a Grunfeld, but black usually has, you know, g6 and bishop g7. So here we have e4, knight takes c3, b takes c3. Now e6 is played, so not e5, but e6. This keeps the d5 square under control. White plays an annoying check, bishop b5 check, which disrupts maybe black's preferred development sometimes. Knight d7 is played on c6 actually this turns out c6 might actually be okay uh, if bishop c4 black can maybe consider c5 anyway white can pr throw the check in again but this kind of position should be actually okay about even so um we have knight d7 in the game knight e2 bishop e7 white castles a6 from alexander alakine it is a bit of a target this a6 pawn if the bishop's capped on that diagonal so bishop d3 now alexander is very cagey about castling actually he keeps his options open here he plays the move c5 so he doesn't routinely castle kingside or anything yet we have bishop b2 uh, if white wants to try some sort of gambit to exploit the king in the center it's not quite giving huge compensation although you know it's pretty messy position you know maybe it's dynamically interesting to consider but that's that's not played bishop b2 queen c7 is played so again not castling and now if he plays f4 maybe he's being provoked here 
f4 quite a committal move um, perhaps e5 is interesting this deprives the knight the use of the f6 square but black seems to get a good position just by casting queenside here and then f6 for example this position could be very very nice with this battery and this all of a sudden this queen's engine accelerated bishop is actually rather venomous here for example if we consider this and then rook takes there's actually rook f8 and bishop h4 trying to drag the queen away from g2 and in fact this actually supports rook f2 and that's all over it's uh, curtains for white in this position white will have to give up a piece so that's a sort of disaster scenario based on this accelerated queen's side queen side bishop so f4 though is played and we do have now the knight being permitted to provoke white forward and alexander uses this opportunity the knight doesn't miss its chance knight f6 hitting e4 now white doesn't really want to commit <clears throat> positionally to e5 it seems white plays knight g3 if e5 black must be about equal at least knight d5 with the immediate threat of knight e3 forking queen and rook this position to stabilize against f5 and then black has a very nice outpost well a nice piece square d5 not outpost it's in in inside the black position but even this kind of thing becomes possible because look queen b7 double attacking g2 and b4 blacks at least equal if not slightly better here a beautiful position for black so in the game yes uh this is tricky already if e5 is out of the question let's have a quick look at that again i uh, hear if rook f3 this just looks awkward black could consider c4 to cement against white playing c4 and again it's just a very very comfortable scenario even this if black even has that uh, this position that bishop's not great black's got great use of d5 the target on f4 it's there's interesting stuff to consider for black there so we have white being lured into knight g3 unsuspectingly guess what alexander alakine played in this position if i give you 10 seconds i'm making it 10 seconds for any live stream potential if you want to guess so 200 points here black to play what would you play in this position it's a world chess championship you must take it very seriously okay alexander alakine plays h5 yes he is keen on trying to kick this knight a potential form pawn or line opener is on the way in conjunction with this bishop this is actually pretty dangerous stuff we have queen e2 that does set up a battery against a6 which will discourage black in theory from castling the knight does have even though it's taken out a square for the knight the does the knight does have h1 and it can crawl back sometimes to the, towards the center you'd think uh, if white didn't play this say h4 then knight g4 and that's a clear target that h4 pawn and if queen e2 g6 holding h5 and then h4 is going to drop you might think well that's not very sensible is it well the thing is if uh, knight takes h5 a tactical shot then there's knight e3 uh, knight g7 harmless this is another piece loose after king f8 <clears throat> this is just very very winning <laughs> for black basically this position uh, bishop takes there's rook takes and queen takes it's just very very winning this position so there's not too many options for white it seems so queen e2 and we have h4 so this poor knight on h1 but it's got some prospects you'd think to get back into the game however alexander alakine plays a very cruel forcing move in this position so for 100 points what would you play with the black pieces starting from now 10 seconds black to play here okay knight h5 coordinating on f4 so using that that space made available by the pawn hitting f4 and white doesn't 
really want to allow a line opening and actually protects f4 with the queen but you know this does have a kind of weakness of the last move it's no longer participating in that battery against a6 so black has the potential now to castle queenside without penalty but if we look at the options here they're not brilliant if g3 black can actually play super aggressively with g5 for example this position hg and this is just diabolical here the, the bishop's hanging and black can even do better than taking the bishop it's so strong with queen e3 check uh with the idea of rook h3 for rook g3 <laughs> and yeah it's just devastating stuff so there's not too many options um here so g5 very very strong um and uh Instead of g3, you might think, well, hold on. What about bishop c1? Yeah. Actually, this might be one of the better moves available. Just bishop c1 because there's no pressure immediately on d4. This is one of the better tries and to reroute here. And black should be fine, though. It can install the form pawn and has pressure on the center. Black should be absolutely fine here. Maybe even with a small advantage or significant advantage, potentially evolving so anyway queen g4 and now black takes the opportunity with that battery being neglected disabled to castle queenside without losing the a6 pawn we have rook a e1 king b8 so an opposite side castling game in a world chess championship with black casting queenside that's pretty ambitious stuff Usually players with the black pieces just aim to draw. Alexander Alakine is really going for it here. We have white playing f5. And now this doesn't seem to have too much venom after e5. d5. And it's as though, well, if white gets in c4, then that'll be fine. But this is not as allowed. We have c4 from black, giving c5 to the bishop. And it's lock looking very, very dangerous for white now after check. Knight f2, a really crushing uh, move to try and open up lines. This is a very, very nice and nasty for white. Absolute pin. And uh, black's rooks are ready for action here with this next move. Guess what black played here for 100 points, starting from now. Not many modern world chess championships uh, are played like this. This is quite a violent, aggressive game. So black to play. Okay. Very aggressive move. G G6 trying to just rip open the G file now. We have F takes G6. Rook DG8. That's the point. Starting to get activity. The knight helps cover G7 here as well. We have bishop C1. It's a very difficult position indeed. If queen takes h4, then knight f4, hitting the queen. And if here, then there's rook h6. And uh, yeah, this this is not looking too clever at all. Uh, if queen takes f7, then it ends in checkmate here, actually. Uh, and if g7, then rook takes g7, and then queen c8 is strong. For example, queen g8, and uh, black is getting loads of pieces against the white king here, and the queen's also being lost there. So quite horrific scenery around here. So bishop c1, bishop c8. Also, I mean, it's so strong that rook takes g6 is, is, is pretty strong as well. Uh, for example, this position with knight g3. Yeah, the, the resources like knight g3, and this... Is like winning the queen potentially in some lines. Yes, yeah, absolutely winning the queen. So it's very, very difficult for white. So bishop c8, though, very strong. Queen f3. Rook takes g6. So g2 a target. F knight, f2 knight still pinned. We have king h1. If uh, bishop e3 here, you might think, is that defensive try? Well, it's only a temporary reprieve. This takes out that defender of the f4 square. And if white has to 
you know, give up G2 and lose the exchange. That's not very pleasant at all. And if we look at this again, if instead Rook takes E3, again, Knight F4, you might try and cling on with HG. But just Queen E7 and then Queen H4, it's pretty crushing stuff what can happen. For example, like this, it's carnage. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's just too much pressure to bear. This is threatening that chat mate there. So these variations are absolute carnage. So King H1, but now Alexander plays the logical looking. I'm sure you can guess this. Okay, Knight G3 check. It's just asking for it, the position. H takes G is played. If King G1, the unfortunate thing here is, guess what Black has here, unfortunately. 10 seconds, Black to play. But you can just take the exchange. But you can also just win the Queen with Bishop G4. The Queen hasn't got D3 because of this pawn. So that's just winning the Queen. <laughs> just, yeah, it's horrendous. So, in fact, if he was very sporting, actually, and played H takes G, after H takes G, he carried on with Knight H3. And it's crashing through. Bishop takes H3. And very sportingly, he did take the Bishop. You know, usually, yeah, World Chess Championship games, they'd be resigned at this point. So Rook takes H3 check. And he even played King G2, allowing checkmate on the board and yeah this might be the one of the only world chess championship classical games to date 2020 to have been checkmate on the board please let me know if that's not correct but i'm talking classical time control uh did a little bit of research it seems this might be the only game at this level so 1929 alakine the first world chess champion to do checkmate in a world chess championship match so he used the accelerated you could call it the accelerated queen's engine this early b6 without even committing e6 he made the game super exciting by castling queenside and went for it so a mega exciting game resulted uh so yeah if you found the game as exciting as i did you might want to check out this opening novelty weapon this very novel move order at uh, that link kings crusher tv slash accelerated qid queen's engine defense okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much mm. uh let's have a look at this game it was a theme bollock bollock job Bokolodjabov. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. It actually ended in one side being chapmated. Uh, so playing white was Evim Bogolubov. <laughs> yes, I, I did actually practice and, and still stumbling. Bogolubov. He. <laughs>